Hi everyone, I've been covering current events and politics and the news uh, on both sides of the channel now for long enough that I think I've got a, uh, an informed, uh, informed opinion rather of what are the best outlets to go to both sides of the channel and for this video I'm going to concentrate on America and specifically American cable TV news channels and I thought I'd do a, quick, a video just to rank them from worst to best as to what I think, where I think they are on the scale. So sit tight, here we go. The worst, in my opinion, by far, because they have no redeeming qualities whatsoever, there is nothing good I can say about this channel, is CNN. The amount of stories that they have put out there about Russia, for instance, and this whole preposterous idea that Trump is in Putin's pocket and the cable news networks, all of them just going hell for, for leather trying to prove it. The amount of stories that they've put out there and then had to retract afterwards or it's not been 100% true and people have even got fired over them is astounding. It really is. Um, and then their, the rest of their news really isn't that much better either. In fact, it's probably worse. I mean, do you remember that time where there, there was a chemical attack in Douma? And they literally went sniffing for chemical weapons. Here's the video. And there's definitely something that stings. <laughs> literally, sniffing for chemical weapons. Doing a, some sort of PR stunt like that, making out that they're... Um, you know, doing great journalistic work over in Syria. When, when literally at the same time as that was being recorded, Robert Fisk was actually in the hospital that was that filmed this so-called chemical attack, which didn't turn out to be a chemical attack. I can say that now with 100% certainty because the OPCW said that it, there was no chemical weapons found in that in that so-called attack in Duma. But at the same, literally at the same time, Robert Fisk and other independent journalists were at the medical center where that fake video was taken doing quality journalism and bringing us the truth and there's CNN sniffing backpacks for chemical weapons what did she think was going to happen it's just it's hilarious it's not a fake story it really happened and who forget who can forget the time when um america had recognized jerusalem as the capital of israel and were condemned by many countries and Trump said that they were or rather Nikki Haley said that America was going to be taking names did Jake Tapper do you know a segment on oh look at a, a how badly a, the rest of the world are looking at America no he dec decided to blame three countries and pick out three countries who had voted against America's wishes in that resolution first up was Venezuela seriously he blames Venezuela take a look among the 128 countries that voted to condemn the U.S. on this issue were some countries with some rather questionable records of their own. Take Venezuela's representative today. The world is not for sale. The world is not for sale and your threats imperil global peace. The U.S. imperils global peace, says the representative of Venezuela, a country in a humanitarian disaster with violence in the streets, an economy in complete collapse, citizens malnourished, dying children being turned away from hospitals, starving families joining street gangs to scrounge for food. On what moral platform does the government of Venezuela stand today? Yeah, no mention there, no mention there whatsoever of the reason the country is in crisis is because of the crippling sanctions that are being put on the country by Western countries such as America and the UK in conjunction with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. No, none, nothing. Didn't say a word about that. And then the next country blamed, surprise, surprise, Syria. Take a look. Not to be outdone, of course, the US also got an earful today from Syria. We're in the seventh year of the brutal Syrian civil war that has killed half a million people and displaced millions. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has used chemical weapons against his own citizens, including children. Yeah. Condemning Syria for voting against America recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. No mention in that 
statement there he made on the war-torn country. No mention the fact that, you know, this was a coup that was actually instigated by America in an operation or the CIA operation that was instigated called Timber Sycamore. I've talked about this many times on my channel. Jack Tapper doesn't. And then the third country he decided to pick on in that, in that segment, was Yemen. I couldn't believe it when he did it, but true, he did it. Yemen. Also feeling a bit preachy to get today, Yemen, which helped draft the resolution condemning the U.S., seemingly more focused, at least during the speech, on where the U.S. puts its embassy in Israel than on the seven million Yemenis on the brink of starvation in that country's civil war. It's hilarious. Yemen, that's it, in the midst of right now of the largest humanitarian, humanitarian crisis in the world. Over a million people contracted cholera, the, the largest epidemic ever. Over 600,000 children con uh, contracting cholera. Oh, by, uh, by the way, in a war that the US and the UK, by the way, but the US specifically, are supplying and arming and refueling of the planes. Complicit in that awful humanitarian crisis that's been inflicted, uh, inflicted on the country. Didn't mention any of that. Just blame those three countries. And st sticking with Yemen, I, I, Yemen, I remember um, not so long ago, I think it was about a year ago, it might have been, Rand Paul was on CNN being interviewed by Wolf, Wolf Blitzer. You'll probably remember this. Take a look. At the very least, it begins the debate of whether or not we should be at war. We are refueling the Saudi bombers, so we are essentially part of the bombing campaign. We're helping them choose targets, and we are refueling the Saudi bombers that are dropping the bombs. It is said that thousands of civilians have died in Yemen because of this. Yes, we need to have a debate over this, and I don't know what the president will do, but he ought to become, come to Congress and ask for permission. We've given him no authority to get involved in the civil war in Yemen, and we have to ask the bigger question, is this making it better or worse? Are there more refugees or less? Is there more chaos or less chaos with Saudi Arabia bombing into Yemen? So, yeah, it's a debate we ought to have, and no president should unilaterally have this authority without the approval of Congress. So for you, this is a moral issue, because you know there's a lot of jobs at stake. Certainly, uh, if uh, a lot of these defense contractors stop selling uh, warplanes, other sophisticated equipment to Saudi Arabia, they're gonna, there's going to be a, a, a significant loss of jobs and revenue here in the United States. That's secondary from your standpoint. It's hilarious, isn't it? Rand Paul says there correctly that the US is complicit in, you know, this, the bombing of these weddings and these funerals and these innocent people that are getting killed in Yemen in these Saudi airstrikes that, again, are being refueled by American planes and, you know, uh, American planes, rather. And <laughs> American intelligence and British intelligence as well. But for this video, I'll concentrate on America. But intelligence are picking out the targets and Wolf Blitzer well what about the jobs that will be lost in America when they're if they're not building all these weapons it's absolutely insane what about all the jobs that would be lost over here in America in the great old US of A if we stopped killing people in these other countries that's basically what Wolf Blitzer was saying it just it gets worse you just look at the panelists Look at who they hire as, as guests for their show and contributors. People such as this guy, James Clapper, the guy who lied in front of the Senate under oath, a federal offence. If anybody else, any normal person, any everyday, everyday person even lies to the police, they're probably going to jail. Especially if they lie to the FBI, they're definitely going to jail. Let alone lying to the Senate under oath. As a director of national intelligence, I think he was at the time. And CNN hire him. Gets a big fat check. It's unbelievable. CNN really are the worst. And remember, this is the news outlet that's chief executive, I think, is it Jeff Zucker his name? Chief executive apologised for the fact that they covered Trump non-stop during the debate, uh, during the um the primaries and the election. He apologised for it and said, well, we'll do that differently. Well, take a look at this. 
This is a screenshot from their, their website just the other day. Wall to wall Trump. There's nothing else on the agenda. Flint still doesn't have clean water, you know. Not a mention of it on their website. They don't mention any of that. And what have they changed since? Nothing. In fact, if anything, they've got worse. Do they mention, like I say, Flint, do they mention any of the other really important matters? Do they mention the eight wars that America are currently in and condemning them? Are currently in, by the way, without congressional approval. Do they make a song and dance about that? No, of course they don't. Do they ever mention climate change? Do they ever do a proper segment on climate change? No, of course they don't. It's just Trump, Trump, Trump. They've got no redeeming features of CNN. None whatsoever. There's nothing good about their network at all. When Trump calls CNN the fake news network, he's right. I disagree a lot with Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter, as many of my subscribers know, but that doesn't mean that I can't, I'm not objective enough to say, yes, Trump is right there, or yes, Trump is right there. When he's right, I'll agree with him. CNN wouldn't. They just wouldn't. Like I say, when Trump calls CNN fake news, he's right. But that's the worst outlet, in my opinion. And the network that's closely, closely just ahead of them, just ahead of them. I know a lot of you are going to expect me to say a different network here, but the one that's just ahead of them is MSNBC, or rather MSDNC. Because that's all they are. They're cheerleaders for the Democratic Party. They are fake leftists. They too have to shoulder some of the blame for Trump winning the election because of the amount of massive free, the massive amount of free advertising they gave him during the primaries and the election. Who can forget that when they filmed, I think it was over 60 minutes of an empty podium with Trump steaks and Trump champagne and it's just free advertising for Trump at the same time as Bernie Sanders is in a stadium. I think it was in Arizona. Might have been, it might have been Atlanta. But he was speaking to a sold out stadium and they cover his empty podium. So you would think after that they learnt their lesson. No. Ed Schultz, in fact, the late, great Ed Schultz, he came out just before he died and, and told the truth about MSNBC. He was down with Bernie Sanders when Bernie Sanders was announcing his run for president and he was going to cover it. And he had a, a phone call from the chief guy at MSNBC and said, you are not covering this. You are not covering this. They wouldn't even cover the fact that Bernie Sanders, the most popular politician in America, remember, was running for president, or at least he is now. They wouldn't cover it. And something like 45 days later, Ed Schultz was fired. What does that tell you about them? You know? And when Trump won, by the way, when Trump won, who did Chris Hayes try to blame? Who did Chris Hayes, you know, think was the problem and the reason Trump won? He blamed third party voters, people who voted for Jill Stein, people who voted their conscience. He blamed people like Susan Sarandon. Can you look me in the eyes, both of you, and say, yes, 24 days in the Trump administration, this is about what I expected it would be? What is the point of it's even insane. saying I'm just asking you that. I'm just asking you. We all make judgments about what the, the choices are. But and I, I'm asking you, can you say, look me in the eyes and say, yeah, this is about what I thought it would be. 24 can you days look in. me in the eyes and tell me you are doing your job to cover these issues completely? Yes, I can. You just told me that you didn't really cover DAPL. Are you covering now all of these explosions Wait. that just happened? Because that's what we need you to do. We don't need Susan, to have a conversation are... about my imagination about where Trump was going to be. What I need you is to talk about and tell people that, listen, your money Excuse me. is Excuse paying me. for these pipelines, and people don't make this association. Jumped up little. Oh, I can't stand that guy. I really can't. So MSNBC, like CNN, are also pro-war. It's good for business. Um, I'm pretty sure they, they wouldn't get advertisements on their channel for Raytheon or Boeing or 
Halliburton or any of these, you know, large weapons manufacturers that buy huge amounts of advertising on their channel, and obviously a lot of them are, on, I would think, probably in the same circles as their board members. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't get that advertising if they didn't, I don't know, say stuff like Brian Williams did when Trump fired some missiles at a Syrian airfield in 2017. Go into greater detail. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. And then there's the number one news show host in America, Rachel Maddow. She's the worst. She's the worst. She's an educated, intelligent woman who is getting paid $30,000 a day to lie to the American public. It's as simple as that. This is not her being wrong. This is her lying to the American public. Not just about what's going on in America by lying by omission, by not talking about all the things that Amer would really help Americans and Americans really need to know about, but also foreign policy. And of course, she cannot go a show or two without talking about Russia. There was a study done recently, I think it was in fair.org. She covers Russia more and, and Russia's ties to uh, Trump more than every other subject combined. Just think about that. And the, the way she does it is just ridiculous. She's a conspiracy theorist extraordinaire. She does it by implying things and never actually saying them. Such as the, the, the time she implied that pulling troops away from the Russian border was proof that Trump was a Manchurian, Manchurian candidate and the PP type, uh, type exists. Yes, she really did that. Or the time that she said that Russian bots were the reason that Bernie ran Hillary close. When any internet marketer, and I used to be one, knew that it wasn't Russian bots, it was people trying to make money in political groups on Facebook. Terrible journalism. Wasn't even journalism, wasn't even close to it. She talks about Russia constantly. Who, f who can forget the time? And <laughs> even the Huffington Post were like, what the hell was that? When she did that report of, of those no soldiers who died in Niger and tried to link it to the travel ban that Trump did. And tried to somehow say that the reason those soldiers died was, oh man, ran out of paper for their passports. I'm, that's no joke. That's honestly what she was implying. She's the worst kind of reporter there is. Even Alex Jones, who I think he's wrong on basically everything, has got more integrity in his little finger than Rachel Maddow has in her entire body. Her reporting is arse gravy of the worst kind. It really is. And I reserve that word for the worst. That's enough about her. I could go on about the other people on there like Joy Reid. Joy Reid. <laughs> Joy Reid, who didn't know who Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez beat Joe Crowley in the New York, uh, New York 14th primary just a, a month or so ago. She didn't know. Now that's bad enough being you know, a political journalist, a political analyst on a major news network. But what's even worse is she lives in New York. Joey Reid lives in New York and didn't know who was running in the New York 14th primary. Just quit your job, Joy Reid. Just quit your job. You're a disgrace. But the thing is, with all this, you would think that they would be below CNN. But the reason they're not below CNN, and this is the only reason, by the way, is because just occasionally, every now and then, they tell the truth about something. And they've done it, as far as I can know, once in the last two years, where CNN haven't. And that was when um, over 50 Palestinians were killed on a day by IDF snipers in cold blood during the Great March of Return um, in Gaza. And Chris Hayes did a three-minute segment condemning it. 
Nobody else, nobody did that on, on CNN. But he did. He's a little, I want to swear. But he did, for three minutes, do a good job. And that's the only reason they're above. <laughs> it's the only reason they're above CNN in my, in my poll. Better than both of those. And I can't believe <laughs> I'm saying this. I can't believe it. It's Fox News. Fox News isn't even a news channel, in my opinion. It's a it's a it's a right wing ideological preachers channel. But the thing is, even though they they uh, right wing ideology, and I'm obviously way further left, I've got nothing in common with most people on there, and they are truly awful, especially in in their you know, in their worship of Donald Trump and everything Donald Trump. They are terrible in, in every aspect, but they do tell the truth way more times than they have done over the last two years about Russia than the other two combined. Just look at um, Tucker Carlson when he did a long segment on how the this people who were championing us uh, uh, or championing America into war and, and, and raise tensions with Russia are the same people that lied to us constantly for the last 20 years. Why should we trust them? He did a long segment on it and it was great. And that's happened a few times actually. Tucker Carlson has done it a few times in the last, last few years. No, he's done it more times than every anchor at CNN and MSNBC combined has. And that wouldn't be too difficult because you'd only have to do it twice. Their guest contributors are awful for the most part. They've, they employ people like, you know, they're Republican cheerleaders. They're not geopolitical analysts. People like Ben Shapiro and Timmy Lasagna or whatever her name is. And Al Ann Coulter. These aren't, you know, they're not geopolitical analysts. They're Republican cheerleaders. They lie for a living. But occasionally, just occasionally, They'll invite other guests on. And just recently, whereas MSNBC and CNN won't go near a progressive um, analyst, a progressive political talk show host, just recently Fox have been inviting people on who are progressives. People like David Patman, <laughs> although some people won't say he is. But, you know, he is a progressive. He does want the things that progressives want. People like Carl Kalinske. <laughs> the, 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 when they invited Karl Kalinske on I thought to myself yeah they won't invite him, invite him back on again but I think they maybe will in the future because he just ripped the host apart on, on that segment totally ripped him apart the, to the point where the, the, the host just didn't know what to do and what to say truth bombs all over the place by Karl Kalinske just threw him off balance so there you go you would think you wouldn't think that I thought that Fox is the best news outlet in America. And the thing is, you'd be right. Because there are other networks in America, other than those three. The problem is, for the most part, as this shows, they're all owned by the same companies. But there is one news outlet in America on cable TV, and it is on cable TV, that's way better than all of them. Possibly all of them put together, especially when you're talking about Amer what's going on in America and American foreign policy. And that's RT. By far, it's the best. If you're in America, get your news from there. That's, <laughs> that's honestly my opinion, and that's my advice. Get your news from there. They are full of reporters at RT who were fired from other places within America for telling the truth. People like, you know, the late great Ed Schultz, who sadly just passed away. People like Jesse Ventura, who MSNBC actually bought him out of his contract rather than let him speak on a, on a on his on his show on their on their channel because he was against the Iraq War. They bought him out of his contract. People like Chris Hedges. He can't get a job at other than outlets in America because he tells the truth too much. We've got other people on there with incredible records, like Larry King. Yes, Larry King is on RT regularly. The former journalists who used to work there have gone on to do amazing things and are well respected around the world. People like Abby Martin. And there are other great journalists on there who do topical news and comedy shows like Lee Camp. 
you get, I can't say enough good. I've said more good things about RT in this segment than I have about CNN, Fox, and MSNBC combined in the last two years. Lee Campshire redacted tonight is excellent. It examines and dissects issues that really do affect Americans, really do affect their lives, rather than just talk about anti-Russia, anti-Syria, pro-imperial, pro-war propaganda that you get on the other three channels that I mentioned. And as for the guests they have on, well, Fox were about the, the best of the, the, the three major cable TV news channels, but just look at this week for an example. Just this week, when Ed Schultz sadly died, sadly died and passed away a few weeks ago, he, he, he had actually already get, had this week earmarked for a series of debates that he was going to do on RT. And Jimmy Dore, who I and many of my subscribers love and think he's fantastic, has actually taken over those debates. And we're on Thursday now, I'm recording this, so there's been three half an hour shows. Just look at the list of subjects they have covered in those three half hour shows just this week, Syria, North Korea, United States foreign policy, Brexit, tariffs and trade wars, the war in Yemen, problems with capitalism. These are things that the other three news networks that I've mentioned just never cover. And then you look at the guests that they have on. Just, just look at yesterday. The two guests they had, had on yesterday for the debate, George Galloway and Richard Wolfe. There is no way those other three net networks would let those two people anywhere near their studios. Because Richard Wolf is, hey, he's anti-capitalism. And we all know the other, the, those three networks, they love capitalism. It's what they thrive upon. And George Galloway, they're never going to invite him on MSNBC, CNN or Fox. George Galloway tells the truth about things no matter who he's talking to. He's unfiltered. He's great. I think I might be a little bit in love with George Galloway, to be quite honest. I think I should be worried. Is there any wonder, with so much ugly truth about the United States spoken RT, spoken on RT, that RT is the place where, as Lee Camp rightly puts it, where Americans in America covering American news are called foreign agents. So there you go, it. In my opinion, RT is by far the best news channel on cable TV in America. What do you think? Let me know in the, in the comments below. Don't buy into any of the red baiting that you'll get from other people about RT saying, oh, it's Russian state media and it's, oh, it's Putin's mouthpiece. It's not. You listen to the reporters. They, they have all said, they all say, we never get told, never get told what we can and can't say and can't talk about. All of them do. Even ex-reporters who have left there and have a, would have an axe to grind really, like Abby Martin. She never got told what she could and couldn't cover. Don't succumb to any of the McCarthy smears. If you want the truth about America and US foreign policy, Russia, Russia Today, RT, is the place to go to get your information. Or, you could come to little YouTube channels like mine. In fact, that's a better option. If you enjoyed this video, please click the bell down there and subscribe um, so you get a notification of next time I drop a video. Also, I can't do this without your help, so if you can afford it and you enjoy my videos, please support the channel by uh, subscribing to my Patreon. Link is down there. You can do it for as little as $1 a month and it really does help. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Please share my work and talk to other people about uh, the issues that I bring up. Thanks very much for your support. Until next time, peace and take care.